Hey folks, thank you for watching Fishing Lake Country. Thank you for subscribing. My name is Dennis. What I want to share with you today is what I'm learning about how to use the live scope to bass fish. Okay? I'm still learning. But here's what I'm learning. Large mouth bass do not sit still all the time. We kind of always kind of had this thought if there's a stump there and it's in eight foot of water, we said, well, the bass are on the stumps, that he's just sitting around that stump hiding, waiting for something to come by and eat. And there are times I'm sure that's what they do. But what I watch on the live scope is, uh, is I'm going down the bank. That's what I do. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking for cover and bass, but I'm looking for cover. So when I see a stump over with an eight foot of water, I throw at that stump. That makes my casting more productive. Because if you don't have a live scope, you go down the bank, you're throwing every six or eight feet, right? And if you don't know that stump's there, you might not ever get close to it. Why do we want to get close, close to a stump? And what I've noticed is bass will hang a stump and set on it, and then they move around that area. They patrol that area. They'll leave that stump. They'll go down the bank eight or ten feet, four feet, six feet, turn, come back, go out there, come back to that stump. Kind of like you do in bed time. You know, when we see bass on a bed, we put your bait over and they'll just leave. Or we notice that they circle the bed. They circle the bed. Then they'll leave. Then they'll come back to the bed. That's kind of what bass do all the time. They just don't sit on that stump. They sit there for a few minutes. They swim up on top. Then they leave. And I'll be fishing around if I'm there for 10, 15 minutes, look back over there. 10 minutes later, he's back on the stump again, you know, and I'll throw over there. That's why we throw at stumps and stuff. They pick something like that and they kind of hang it. In a treetop, they swim through the treetop. They'll go down the length of the treetop. And you see them swim up through the limbs. Then they'll leave. They're not going to be like, well, there was a bass there. And I'll hang around and fish around a little bit, look back over 10 minutes later, and he's back there again. They move a lot more than we think they do, okay? But they still will hang close to cover. So that's what I do. I look for cover. I look for treetops. I look for stumps, and I throw at those objects. That's how I use the live scope. Spotted bass are a different story. They tend to move all the time, and they will hold an area. Now, what I've noticed in the area, it might be, I noticed at a bridge the other day, I seen some schoolers, I threw at them, they nipped at me, and they went on that way, and I'm kicking around, I couldn't find them. I kicked over here. There's some schoolers over here, and I threw at them. That happened, I observed by the eye, and that happened three or four times. I think they was the same score every time. I think they were just cruising that area, just cruising. That makes sense to you. They just don't say, all right, we're going to lake 10 miles. They have an area, they just cruise it. Now, they might move a lot. Might, next week, they might be down the lake another mile, but they take an area when they're feeding, they just cruise it. There's a lot of shad in this area. I'm seeing a lot of shad, too. But that's how they do They stay in groups. And I throw through them. You'll see in this video, I throw through them. My bait goes through the shad school, and they're following down to the bottom, the bottom bait. Okay, and sometimes they'll pick it up. That's how the spotted bass are pretty easy to spot because they're like crappy, they're cool. When something holds closer to an object, closer to the bottom, they're hard to see. When bass are just cruising along the bottom, searching, they're hard to find on a live scope, but they look like tombstones, or you can see their tail kicking. I think that's what looks like a tombstone. Depends on what angle they're going away from you. If they're going away from you, they're not going to be as a big uh, object to see, right? If they're going sideways, you can see the whole body. So it depends on what angle the fish is going, what's on the bottom, is the bottom curvy, is it flat, all that makes a difference in spotting the fish, okay? But you can use your live scope to bash yours with, but you got to slow down. When you spot cover, you got to stop. If you if the boat's moving too much, it's hard to keep your live scope. Live scope don't read real, real wide, guys. And it's only like a 20% kind. I, can't, I had to figure down one time, and I'm like, well, don't, don't keep me, don't quote me on that because... Uh, you go to find as you get older, sometimes you mumble up a lot of numbers and stuff. It's hard to keep to look at straight sometimes. But it doesn't meet a very wide width, okay? So if, you're, if the boat's moving along, you got to hammer down on the trolling motor, it's not going to do you any good. You're probably better off at 360. But if you're going to stop every once in a while and look around, you know, kick along, that's what I do when I, I kick along my trolling motor. But when I, as soon as I see something rough or one of my, come through the death finder, I stop. And I check it out, then I go on. If it's something I want to fish, I throw at it. And I've got fish many times, bass, and I still don't see a bass. I see a stump, or I see a couple of rocks, and go like, throw over there, bay hits the bottom, I see something move, get the bite. Okay, that's what I do. I look for cover more than I look for fish. Okay, hope you hope that uh, helps you some. If you have a live scope and trying to use it that way, if you're thinking about buying a live scope with a 360, hope that'll help you that way too. But how do you use your live scope to catch bass? That's what I'm trying to share with you. Appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed the video. This is the intro and the outro. Okay? So I'm sharing with y'all in one shot. See you next time, guys. Subscribe. And remember, on Sundays, pour the catch and crappy baits. Leave a number. 
whoever gets the closest with that going over wins. Guys, I mail out every week, every every Wednesday I announce the winner. And on Thursdays I've been mailing out to people. See you next time, guys. Fishing Lake Country. Oh boy, see that jump? My guys. <laughs> I get asked this question all the time. Can you use your live scope for bass fishing? The traffic's been so bad, it's coming down now. I'm gonna set my I'm gonna set my little camera up and show you what I'm doing. And I've answered this. Yes, you can, but you can't move fast. I mean, you gotta kick along slow because the bottom gets blurry and you it's hard to pick a bass out from other stuff. Now, I'm throwing a stuff sometimes that's not bass, but I've seen these three. They were kicking along, they was about 30 feet out. I cast it over there. When the bait came down past him, he went out and grabbed it. He'd been trained. He read the same book I read. Come on. He knew exactly what to do with that bait. Now, these are not monsters. Stop. I'm just fishing. If I catch a six pounder, that's a plus. But where the traffic's been today and stuff on this lake, <laughs> that'd be also be a miracle. All right. See, he's just a, oh, he's probably, he's long, he's, he's long, guys. He ain't fat, is he? He's probably 12 and a half, 13. Now, he's a, they're schoolers. They're constantly moving. I'm seeing on my depth finder, my live scope, they're constantly moving. I throw at them sometimes, and some, the bait gets deep enough. There's, I'm in six, eight foot of water. I'm running a shallow point right here, guys, and I'm running the inside of it. I'm trying to stay in the shade because it's hot. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know if the fish like the shade. I do. So I'm going to get my other camera set up here, and I'll show you all what I'm, what I'm looking for. The other one, one came off of a... Uh, Boathouse, and there was about five fish there. And I, and I said, they, they look like bass where they're holding to the bottom. They hold to the bottom more than crappy do. Crappy suspend. And it was a bass, and I caught one of them. I hung around there for a little bit, and the rest of them would not do a thing, okay? I caught one off of a stump back there, and I lost two. So I've caught three or four, I don't know, guys, and I've lost two or three. Just not getting the hook set on. Sometimes they're too close to the boat. I'm afraid to set the hook very hard, break my line. <laughs> break your line, and you... Right there's some bass right here. Come on, camera. Let me get the camera on real fast. All right, guys. There's a, I'm gonna say that's a school spot of bass right there. I'm my bait in. It is. See how fast they're moving too. Get my bait down here. No. Right, they fall up my bait to the bottom. You see a couple of them fall to the bottom. I don't think they're very big fish, but I threw at them. Now my bottom, my bottom's getting too close to the, let me bring it. I'm going from, I'm going from, uh, uh, you wanna keep your bottom close you can, but sometimes, guys, I'm moving from 10 to 12 foot to six foot. I'm fishing so I don't stop and fool with it. I just live, live alone. You know what I'm saying? I'm fishing, I don't, I, I don't stop and change the camera change that angle all the time and I probably should. All right. right here's why I caught the last one. That's why I came back. I'm trying to stay in the shade too. It helps the camera. Keep the glare off the camera too. There it goes. Boy, it's too late. It's under the boat. What's this right here? Woo! That's something, something nice or school or something. Let's see. All right. Came right down through them. All right, let well, them follow me down. Come on, guys. Get it? Went back up, didn't he? Oh, what the hell? He followed me down, but he didn't take it. All right, guys. I seen, I didn't get a chance to get the other camera on it. I looked back and uh, I seen four fish running behind me. I just threw back her at them as fast as I could, so. I did not get the other camera on, but we will. Sometimes I don't have time. I showed you how they're moving fast. I threw out in front of these and just got to guess which direction they was going, and I don't think it ever hit the bottom. Like I said, I've tried a swim bait. I love throwing swim baits. I can't get them to hit a swim bait. They, they bump it, but they want to hit a worm. Now I'm throwing blue fleck with a blue tail. I don't think they ain't make this anymore. I think I make blue fleck far tail. I've had these a long time, guys. I've had them since probably the late 90s. <laughs> I bought them, I was buying them by the hundred bags, guys. And I still got four or five bags of different colors. I got a couple bags that ain't been opened yet. I love the four-inch power worms. I was buying them by the hundreds. 
I'm just wearing him out. He, he just keeps on digging. He's not that big. He just, like I said, I got light line. I got this medium medium light rod. Right. But, he's, but he's a fatty. He's a nice one. Got you now. Got you now. Well, he's a nice fish. I said on a medium light rod, guys, this is a fight. Look, this is why this is why I took my time and kept it tight. Fell out in the net. Look at there. All that fight and you think it'd be, but oh mouth, you know, he would never a hook would be buried, wouldn't it? But that old hook gets up in this part right here, it's tough. If you don't go through that thin part right there, it just skin hook seems all you're doing. He jumped one time too. He's a nice fish. Guys. Now he's about the length of the other one. He's about 14, but he's heavy. He's probably, gosh, I don't think he'll make two pounds. He's probably a pound 12, something like that. Pound 14, all right. Guys, look right here. Worms. Oh, I messed him. Did you see him right there? I messed him. That's a bad, he's following my worms. See, he might be small. I don't have big dirt. Uh, it's hard to judge it sometimes. Uh, I lost him. But the bottom contours and stuff of the lake, it ain't hard to lose them. Little well, school shad. Alright guys, I just do it this little tree in the water. <laughs> Woo! I like that. Y'all get to see that one? Raise your hand if you got to see that. Woo, he could jump in the boat. <laughs> oh, that was funny. Y'all see, I hope that got done on camera. He jumped and almost landed in the boat. You got to love bass fishing, I'll tell you. <laughs> now, what I've done is a little tree right there. I was trying to tell you he jumped. And I just threw at that little tree and I was looking with my scope. I said, I don't see them all. And I didn't see any fish there. If they're running the bottom, you're not going to see them all on live scope, guys. Because it's too much stuff for them to blend in with. Alright, I don't have a six pound line, so I'm not gonna. I mean, eight pound. I'm sorry, I got eight pound. I did retire a while ago. I, did, I mean, keep forgetting I changed it. I know why you're so mean now. So thanks to Spot Bass. Wow. Wow. Guys, I wasn't expecting to catch quite, all this traffic. I wasn't expect, expecting to catch many fish this evening. Now, that was on a candy bug color worm, if y'all noticed what I was throwing. Yeah, I have switched colors almost every, every couple fish, hadn't I? This, it goes to show you guys, color can be important sometimes. Main thing is something they can see. Candy bug is a deep purple, it's in, and it's got the candy flake in it, the purple, and the, y'all know what I'm saying. Bla uh, the other one's blue flake. Isn't he pretty? That's a large mouth. But I've seen that, I've seen that, I thought maybe it was a spotted bass. When I've seen this, this lateral line, it's different, isn't it? He's dark, isn't he? That's a nice bass. He's a little bit bigger than the other one. Thank you, buddy. Fish at 30 feet. There's my bait right there. See that one that's rose up at my bait? They're bass. I think they are. I'm going by the way they act, guys. I'm going by the, I'm gonna call, I call it body language, but the way they swim, the behavior. I thought it was white perch, but the one acted like a bass. It's too wet, close to us probably are. Right. When white perch swim close to the bottom, they look, they're like on a hobby horse. <laughs> Those are hanging off of steel. They're not covering a lot of ground. They're not paying attention to my bait. I think my bait just came through. Let's try it again. One more time. See them follow me and I reeled it in? There it comes, right down amongst them there. That looks like a white perch right there. You're running like a spotted bass. Great time of day. <laughs> I didn't think he's very big, but he thought he thinks he's a monster. <laughs> He says, get out of my way. Give me room to run, buddy. I'll show you. I'm going to tell you what. Bass from about, oh, I'm going to say 10, 12 inches maybe to 14, very hard, don't they? He's just throwing a fit. 
He might be 10, 12. Yeah, that's what I figured. She make a big bass just, you got the weight, of course, you know. But they don't have that run around like that to throw a fit. All right, guys, we're just trying to catch a few fish. He's not very big at all. Camera's making him look shorter than what he is. <laughs> all right, guys, back with you. Look here. Here's what I'm seeing. See that? Now, do I know they're all bass? No. I'm going by the, see how this one's holding off the bottom swimming? That's that's what I consider a bass. That, that was a bass. I go by the way that hold it, that's a bass. That's a pretty decent fish right there. Mm -hmm. See his tail moving? You can even see his tail moving, watch. See? Yeah, that's a pretty nice fish. Okay, these marks, I don't know that far off, but I cast at them, right there, that, those two are bass. Some of them are, some, of them are, uh, some perch. I don't know what that does. Those are perch. Those are probably some perch, a uh, white perch. All right, that's why the bass are up in this little area. When you got some perch and white perch and different fish, I don't see some shad using a flat like this. I'm up on a flat off the channel. <laughs> bass is gonna cruise it in the evenings because, but hey, they they're gonna eat there. Now I'm using that bass came on a. Uh, all right, I'm gonna throw at those right there. Let's do it on those right there. Try to get y'all live action here. See that mark right there on the bottom? At 25 feet. I don't know where my bait is, I don't see it. I was hoping I was close. See, there's another fish coming out at 35. See how the bottom's moving right there? That's a fish. You couldn't see that if the boat's moving. I'm being still right now. If the boat's kicking along the trolling boat, you're not gonna see that. If they're on the, like right there you go. If they're on the bottom, they're hard to see. That's what, that's the point I've been trying to share with people. And you'll never see your bait while you're moving. I mean, see, he's gone. He's done one across the bottom. Of course, the bottom of the lake's uneven. He's probably in a low spot or something like that. See how they're moving? That's what makes it difficult. There's, when I throw there sometimes, time the bait gets there, it's over with.